and welcome to this week's edition of Sidelines. I'm Jimmy Johnson. This week we'll preview the Women's Volleyball Championships and we'll dip into some college hoops up at Colgate University. But first we have to congratulate the 2010 men's soccer champion and it was a surprise. With the top two seeds ousted in the semifinals, we were treated to a 2009 title game rematch. The top seed at Colgate Raiders hosted the tournament and had to go up against the defending champion Bucknell Bison in the first semifinal on Friday. We'll start early in the first half with Bucknell's Josh Plump gunning up the right side. Firing this shot, but the Patriot League Keeper of the Year, Chris Miller, was there for the save. Plump tests him again less than 30 seconds later on this turnaround kick, but Miller makes a save. He made four in all, including a diving stop on a strike by the Offensive Player of the Year, Brendan Bergdorf. Colgate pressured late in the first half, and Shane Conlon nearly made it 1-0 with this shot, but Mark Hartman was there for the save. It was a big save because right after halftime, Bucknell cashed in. Josh Plump beat Miller for the game's only goal minutes into the second half. We'll take a look at it one more time. As you can see, C.K. Kumal hit the perfect through ball to Plump for the goal. Colgate had several second half chances, out shooting the Bison 11-2 in the half, but they had trouble getting the ball on goal. So Josh Plump's goal in the 50th minute was all that Bucknell needed to advance to the final for the second straight season. Now they just had to wait and find out to see who they would play. It was American last year, and the Eagles were hoping to get another shot at the Bison. But it was Lehigh pressuring early as Neil Melchioni tested Matt Mikowski on a hard shot from the left side. And a minute later, Mikowski had to reach up for Joe Paleo's header. The two teams went to halftime scoreless, but like the first semifinal, the opening minutes of the second half provided a goal. Alessane Kane dished to Mike Warden, who squeaked through two defenders and fired a shot to the left corner for the 1-0 lead. Warden returned the favor in the 87th minute, stealing the ball in his own zone, launching a pass down the field and catching Kane onside. The Eagles' leading scorer sped past the defender and slipped a shot past Jonathan Nidell for the 2-0 lead and a bid to the title game. Mikowski made six saves to record the shutout. With the 2-0 win, the Eagles set up a rematch of the 2009 championship game. It didn't take long for the Bison to let everyone know that they were the defending champs. Tommy McCabe takes this indirect kick in front of the Bison's bench, and Ross Liberati is there for the deflection and the 1-0 lead just three minutes in. 18 minutes later, McCabe lifted another indirect kick into the box where Liberati used his head to push it past Mikowski to make it 2-0. Liberati, the tournament MVP, celebrates with his hands up in the air in surprise. The Eagles were just as shocked and didn't have much luck beating Hartman. The Eagles' best chance was deflected wide, and when other scoring chances came, the Eagles couldn't get the ball on frame. Alessandro Kane had the last great chance firing this shot wide a few minutes before the buzzer sounded, and the Bison stormed the field. The Bison win their second title in two years, and Ross Liberati becomes only the third player in Patriot League history to net two goals in the championship game. His coach, Brendan Nash, believes that Liberati's special performance came in a special win. Uh, it, it feels pretty special because when uh, the season started off, we obviously were the overwhelming favorites to, to repeat, but the season didn't start off so well. We started off 2-5. and five. I think there was some self-doubt, and uh, the guys just kept pushing along. And When we got into the, the Patriot League, Season, it still was a little bit bumpy of a ride, and then when we got to the very last game, we needed a little help even to get to this point. And once we got here, it was almost like a weight was off the team's back, and our student athletes did a great job preparing for this moment and took care of a, a very tough Colgate team on Friday night, and uh, they had the better to play, but we got the, the one nothing result. And then today, the guys came to play, and American had a, a very good second half, but in the first half, our guys were ready, and uh, for Ross Liberati to come out of the back and score, two restarts, it, it kind of sums up what we're successful at. The Bison have now found success in back-to-back -back years. The first time in school history, Bucknell has won consecutive men's soccer titles. Coach Nash admits that, in a way, the 2010 title meant more. I, I think this one is a little bit sweeter as far as dealing with the adversity, but last year we did it at home, and there's no place like home, and we loved having a, we, had, we traveled well today, but at home we have a couple hundred fans there when we bring up the trophy in. We did have a good uh, following and they, they did make it feel sweet, but I think dealing with the adversity that we had to deal with of not starting off well, dealing with so many injuries and, and just pushing through and our kids were pretty resilient the whole season, so it, it, it is pretty sweet. Senior defender Travis Rand agreed with Nash that the 2010 title was much sweeter. It's unreal, you know, um, to, to get to this point after all the hard work, you know, countless hours in the off season, in the summer, and uh, the struggles we had throughout the season, but to finish strong is, just means the most. And back to back is a special thing, first time in Bucknell history. So and this was uh, certainly not easy at all. Um, nothing like last year. You know, we had the battle just to get into this tournament. You know, our season was on the line games ago, long, long time before this Patriot League tournament. So I mean, we were the underdogs, but we knew we had it. We knew that we were a great team, and uh, if we came and did our thing, then we knew we could win it. So. 
They also knew if they stuck to what got them there, they'd be successful. Scoring off set pieces and defense was how they did it. Oh, hey, that's our bread and butter. Set pieces are our bread and butter. They have been all year. You know, and just two, two my fellow seniors stepping up, two great deliveries from Tommy, and I uh, can't say enough about Ross. Just those finishes and uh, just uh, well-deserved MVP, certainly. But, yeah, meant a lot to go up early. Taking the early lead, however, was something not familiar to Bucknell during the regular season, and Coach Nash was happy to see the early goals in the tournament. Well, it's one of the things that we haven't done much this year. We've been playing from behind so much the whole entire season, and we've been calling our team the Cardiac Kids. And we told the guys, we said, can we do something and score first? And actually, both games this weekend, we were able to score first. When you score an early goal two minutes in, that you know, you, there's still a lot of soccer yet to be played. So our guys did a good job of managing that. Soccer will continue for the Bison as they earn the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Rand hopes that his squad learned from last year's trip to the NCAA tournament. You know, the thing is, when you go to the NCAAs, you can't look at it like you, you're with house money. You should go in, you got to go, you want to win. Um, to be honest with you, I still have a bitter taste from last year, how our season ended at UVA. Um, so the goal is to win every game. Our expectations, you know, they're high. You know, there's no reason why we shouldn't continue to win. Um, we're defending well, so, uh, but we're excited for it. Uh, excited to see who we get in the first round. Won't be a home game, so we'll be on the road again. But, uh, yeah, we'll definitely be ready to go. The Bucknell men's soccer team is headed to the NCAA tournament for the third time in five seasons, and for the first time in that span, the Bison will not have to leave the state of Pennsylvania. Bucknell will face 18th-ranked Penn in the first round tonight at 7 at Rhodes Field in Philadelphia. Also winning a Patriot League title last weekend were the Lehigh Mountain Hawks, securing their ninth football title and first outright since 2001 with a 24-7 win over Georgetown. The Hawks, who will end the regular season against their rival Lafayette this Saturday, will represent the Patriot League in the Division I FCS tournament that will start on November 27th. Lehigh moved into the nation's top 25 this week, taking the number 22 spot after winning its eighth game of the season. The Patriot League congratulates both the Bucknell men's soccer team and the Lehigh football team on their titles. There's one more league title up for grabs this fall, and it's the Women's Volleyball Championship. American had its title streak snapped at eight straight last season, falling to Army in the championship game. For the Eagles, 2009 was the first year that they had lost more than one match to a Patriot League opponent. They've returned to their elite form in 2010, going 14-0 in the league and earning the top seed for the ninth time in 10 years. American will open the tournament at Bender Arena with a match against number four seed at Bucknell at 4 p.m. Saturday. The other semifinal will feature last year's champion Army, which earned the number two seed and the third seed at Colgate Raiders. Their match will start at 6 p.m. The league final will be at 4 p.m. Sunday. Here's a closer look at each playoff team. American led the Patriot League with a 17-2 record and a perfect 14-0 league record. The Eagles posted a league-best .299 hitting percentage while holding opponents to a hitting percentage of .138. At the forefront of it all was the player of the year, Magdalena Tequil, who had 358 kills and a .354 hitting percentage, both league bests. Cassandra Ricketts was third in the league with a .325 hitting percentage, and Angelita Waterman was fourth with a .291. American boasted five of the top ten hitters in the league. Krista Sakala was first in the league in assists with 9.70 per set, and Katarina Sakova was second in blocks with one per set. Coach Barry Goldberg was named the league's coach of the year for the third time in his career after guiding American to a perfect 14-0 record against league teams. It's the sixth time in the last ten years the Eagles have run the table in league play and American is currently riding a 21-match winning streak, which is tied for the longest in league history. The Eagles will face Bucknell in the semifinals. The Bison finished the season 10-16 overall and 8-6 and in the Patriot League. Bucknell has been led by Emily Sawanabury, who had 29 service aces, and Reagan Jackson, who had 88 blocks. Heidi Camp moved up to the first team after earning a second team nod last season. She played in 94 of her team's 95 frames this season, finishing 8th in the league with a .259 hitting percentage, and she was 10th with 2.32 kills per set. Army finished 18-13 overall and 11-3 in the league. The Black Knights boast three major award winners, including senior Karen Powell, who was named the Setter of the Year. Powell is the second straight Setter of the Year from Army and fourth overall since the award was introduced in 2006. She led the league with 1,103 total assists, while her 9.68 assists per set average was second. Senior Brittany Jensen was named the Defensive Player of the Year, and Megan Wilton was named the Rookie of the Year. 
Jensen posted 409 total digs, which is third amongst all league players, while her average of 3.82 digs per set was second. Wilton was a steady contributor for Army all season. She has played in 107 of her team's 114 sets, posting a team-high 89 blocks. 17 of them were solo. She also posted a .251 hitting percentage and had 233 total kills. Army will go up against third seed at Colgate, which finished 17-11 overall and 10-4 and in the league. That includes a 3-1 win over Army in the final week of the regular season. The Raiders placed three players on the all-league team, including senior middle blocker Casey Ritt, who earned first-team honors. Ritt was stellar for Colgate during the regular season. She tied for the league lead with 96 total blocks, while finishing third with 20 solo blocks. Her 0.9 blocks per set average was fourth best in the league heading into the tournament. She also has the team's best hitting percentage at .250. Maureen Colligan led the Raiders with 282 total kills, while Kayla Dockery contributed with 194 kills and the team's second best mark of 75 total blocks. The Women's Volleyball Championship will be streamed live on Patriot League All Access. Be sure to sign up for your subscription to watch all of this weekend's action. Also remember to subscribe to All Access for the 2010-11 men's and women's basketball season. If you do, you'll get to see players like Colgate's Mike Venezia, who returned to the Raiders lineup after missing last season. With two close losses, including a season opening 62-60 loss against Binghamton at home on Saturday, the Raiders are looking to break out. And with Venezia back on the court for the first time in nearly a year, Colgate is ready to do just that. Here's the story. Mike Venezia is back. The junior on a team comprised of mostly underclassmen has finished rehabbing and is ready to lead Colgate forward. Losing the first two games since returning from injury has been tough, but he still can't deny the fact that he's happy to be back on the court. You know, I felt great being out there again. I haven't played in, in about a year, and uh, I was just excited to play with these guys. I think we've got a great group of guys, guys who really care this year. Uh, they play hard. I was excited to be out there with them. Uh, I wish it would have turned out a little better, but. You know, I, I was happy to be out there, definitely. Venezia struggled in his first game, hitting just two baskets, including a buzzer beater before halftime, but he came out roaring in his second game, scoring a team-high 19 points. The junior captain said he's feeling healthy and ready for the season. It felt pretty good. It just felt like I was back. You know, uh, I had cotton mouth before the game, uh, but um, it definitely felt pretty good. I felt relieved. It took me a while to get back in shape after sitting out for so long, but um, our strength coach does a great job with us. And uh, I, I felt pretty good tonight. I felt like my wind was up there. Um, I felt pretty comfortable. It showed Monday in the Raiders' 69-66 loss where he scored 19 points, just one shy of his career-high 20. Venezia averaged 10.8 points per game in 2008-2009, but three games into 2009, he suffered a season-ending injury. The sociology anthropology major, whose father played basketball for Villanova, was forced to rehab and watch the game from the bench, which gave him a different perspective. I think I definitely learned, learned a lot. I learned how to be a vocal leader. Um, I couldn't uh, you know, lead on the court, so I had to talk to the guys and give them a different uh, point of view from, from the sideline. But it was definitely frustrating not being able to be out there and fight with them every day. Um, but, uh, but like I said, I definitely learned a lot. Um, so it helped me go, coming into this year, I think. The Westfield, New Jersey native will look to help the Raiders exceed expectations as they were selected to finish seventh in the league. With younger players like Yao Gaiwu and Mitch Rolls at his side, the Raiders have a strong group of underclassmen who are anxious for the chance to succeed. We're definitely hungry coming into this year. You know, last year was a little disappointing as a team, and personally I didn't play, so I'm definitely coming, coming in hungry and uh, coming off a loss tonight, which is disappointing. Uh, I think it just makes us more hungry, so we gotta, we got to just use it as motivation, I think. The Raiders will return to the court Friday with a tough road game at ACC Powerhouse Duke. It's one of ten road games that they will play before opening the Patriot League scheduled January 8th at home against Army. That game between the Raiders and the Blue Devils will tip off at 8 p.m. on Friday and can be seen on ESPN3.com. That's our show for this week. Be sure to join us next week for another edition of Sidelines. And also check out the league's new show, Road to the League Championships, which will recap and preview men's and women's basketball action all season long. Just look for it on Patriot League All Access every Tuesday. And remember, you can also follow the league's action on PatriotLeague.com or you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We thank you for joining us this week and we hope you enjoy the volleyball championships. Have a great week.